Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog. Hope you all are doing good and staying safe. First of all, thank you so much for all your suggestions for eating out options here in Muscat, which I had requested to mention in my previous video's comment section. I think whenever we are in need of a specific cuisine, I just have to open that video to read your comments. Thank you once again. Anyways, I had mentioned, I guess in one of my previous videos from here that I am being a bit late in editing and publishing videos. It's because we have families and friends coming home either for lunch or dinner. So today's video was taken on one such day when we invited our very close family friends Ugeis and Nifla along with their two little boys. They came home for dinner. I'll talk about them, our friendship and all such in between. And as usual, shot the dishes I prepared for them. Hope you will like it. Keep watching. Now this is white rice that I'm soaking in water for the well appam that we call. I have already done videos on this earlier but we'll show again in this video. Usually desserts are prepared a day before but that's mainly to save so much time. As they are coming for dinner, I have enough time in the morning. And moreover, puddings that need to get set which is done with gelatin, china grass or some cheesecake kind pudding. Those are better to be prepared the previous night. Here I'm preparing like instant or easy puddings and also can be done on the day. It needs just 2 or 3 hours of chilling in the refrigerator. So this is a mix of fresh cream and condensed milk. Then into that goes an evaporated milk. To this goes in fruits. Here I have used canned one. You can use fresh fruits. Sliced in some banana too. And that was a simple fruit salad, chill until served. Next goes preparation for the pudding or the second dessert. Again in a bowl, take whipping cream and whipping powder. If you have good quality whipping cream that gives you that fluffy creamy texture, you can use that. Otherwise, do add whipping powder which makes a good whipping cream when you beat on high speed. And that's done. Keep that aside for a while. This is tin pineapple, chopping into tiny pieces. You may use fresh pineapple, make sure you cook the pieces in sugar and water or else if you use it directly, the pudding will taste bitter. So be careful of that. This is a heap spoon of Nutella. Add some hot water and mix. This was a bit thick, so I added hot water to the Nutella bottle, mixed and poured it. And keep that aside. You may use any type pound cake. I have used orange flavored one because chocolate and orange is my favorite combination. Slice a pound cake in equal size, preferably thick slices and layer it at the bottom of the pudding tray. Pour some of the syrup in which the tin pineapples were. If you don't have the syrup, use some milk. This is to moist the cake. Spread the pineapple pieces on top. Add half the whipping cream and layer. Then goes the next layer, again the cake slices. Gently give a press. Over to this, pour the Nutella. Chocolate and orange is a very good combination. Do try it if you haven't. Again spread the pineapple pieces. And then goes in the rest of the whipping cream. Spread evenly. Now garnish. I am not very good at garnishing, especially cakes. I powdered the leftover cake and used as a border. Then place the pineapple pieces. And these are to add some color. It's tutti frutti that I bought from Lulu recently. Chill for at least 2 hours. These are dried Kashmiri red chilies and the normal dried red chilies. It's for the chicken fry. Soak this in hot boiling water for almost 30 minutes and if you don't have time, boil it on medium flame for 5 to 7 minutes. 
and that's cashews again soaking in water I'd already shared a cold pasta and potato salad in one of my recent videos but I don't add the same ingredients every time there will be slight changes here and there the main ingredients are potato and pasta both that needs to be cooked these days I try to edit each recipe from the vlogs and share on my Facebook page so you may check out each recipe from there as well For the dressing I usually add lebanese which tastes really good or else you may use hung curd or greek curd to that add some fresh cream olive oil chili mayonnaise or the normal one some crushed black pepper last time I used honey for sweetness this time I added condensed milk which is the best substitute some salt give a mix forgot to add that some red chili sauce I had some pineapple pieces that was left over after making the pudding adding that to the salad then some whole pickled olives that's pitted this has tiny carrot pieces that was filled in the holes it's optional to make it more colorful i used half of a red bell pepper or capsicum and half a yellow capsicum and some cucumber too this is to add color you can go for green capsicum instead add that to the dressing then goes in cooked pasta and steamed potatoes someone had commented in my previous video on how to make the potatoes look colorful by adding a pinch of turmeric in fact this video was taken even before publishing that video thank you for the tip and i shall use it next time i make it So the preparations I had to do initially was over or I can say the dishes that need to be chilled before serving are completed. So I took a very short break preparing my favorite Earl Grey tea. I used to love normal black tea earlier but ever since I tried Earl Grey it's my favorite in the black tea version and I add some honey to sweeten it. If you're following me on my Instagram you might have seen the latest reel I had put preparing a tea and that's Earl Grey. Whenever I crochet I love to get that aroma of this tea and take a sip every now and then while crocheting. Now for the velappam recipe, a very famous or I can say my family's favorite, especially my husband's favorite breakfast dish. He even loves this for dinner. For that you need to ferment the batter. And here I've used active dry yeast. Need to activate the yeast by dissolving it in lukewarm water and some sugar. Just wait for 5 minutes and it will get activated. Now drain the soaked white rice add to a blender to this add desiccated coconut the yeast mix and some cooked rice add some water and make a smooth batter the more coconut you use the better taste so for the second batch i added some more and some cooked rice as well leave that to ferment the menu for today which i always forget to mention in the beginning is velappam with prawns curry kappa biryani or the tapioca biryani chicken fry kerala parotta which we ordered salad and the two desserts now to prepare the marination for chicken fry make a ground paste of the soaked dried red chilies some water it was soaking in and some grated coconut add that to the chicken along with crushed ginger garlic shallots very little green chilies or you may even skip it turmeric powder garam masala powder coriander powder lemon juice coconut oil salt and mix really well i kept that on the counter top and it was marinating i guess for almost 4 to 5 hours at least you can even marinate it the previous night and place it in the refrigerator and then go cooking the beef that's needed for the tapioca biryani you can also make the dish with mutton or chicken the ingredients i added to cook the beef will be mentioned in the description box so now let me tell you about our friends who are coming home 
we met Ubais and Nifla in UAE. It's more than a decade we know them now. Rihan was a year old when we shifted to an apartment in Ajman. They lived in the same flow and we were neighbors then. We traveled together which was our first international trip to Turkey. It was I guess in the year 2009. Ever since then we have maintained a beautiful family friendship and we kept in touch always even after we left to Saudi and they left to Muscat. Thanks to technology though it was limited those times. So happy to meet them back here in Muscat. Back to dinner preparation, preparing prawns curry and for that I use my clay pot. Heat coconut oil and add few fenugreek seeds. After few seconds add crushed shallots or even sliced. Add few curry leaves. Just after a couple of minutes of sauteing add crushed ginger and garlic. Saute well till the raw smell leaves. Add red chilli powder and turmeric powder. Make sure the flame is low so that it doesn't burn. A bit of coriander powder and mix for some time. Add chopped tomatoes and mix. Add some salt. Add a bit of hot water and mix. Keep on low flame. and keep cover till the tomatoes are cooked meanwhile making a ground paste of roasted coconut and soaked cashews along with the water it was soaking in i brought this roasted coconut from kerala it's just freshly grated coconut roasted with some turmeric powder and curry leaves make sure to give a mix to the tomatoes checking if it doesn't stick to the bottom It's become like a paste now. Time to add prawns and mix gently. After a couple of minutes, add some curry leaves and then goes in the ground coconut mix. Add more water as the gravy will thicken because of the cashews. adding salt as per needed mix well keep on medium flame and let it boil switch off the flame after it boils for a minute or two time to temper the curry heat coconut oil fry some crushed shallots add curry leaves some kashmiri red chili powder and some dried red chilies add that to the curry and close immediately to lock the flavors this is frozen tapioca which i feel tastes good just as fresh it's a lulu brand i buy normally Cook with enough water and salt. Cook on high flame. After the first whistle, reduce the flame to medium and cook for five to six minutes. And it also depends on the quality of the tapioca you use. Even if it overcooks a bit, it doesn't matter for this dish as we anyway will break it down while mixing with the beef. They said they will be coming home around at 8:30, so I anyway have enough time to clean up my kitchen. It was just three nights we traveled to Turkey with them. It said that we know a person more closer when we travel together, and then we are still together. 
Me and my husband, we both love traveling and have got the chance to see many places in this beautiful world. It needn't be a luxury trip. Our Turkey trip was purely budget friendly when we weren't much financially stable. It's a love for travel that my husband somehow wanted to go for an international trip. And at that time, there was an offer to Turkey through Air Arabia. Somehow managed and ever since then, we explored more places. If you are someone who haven't traveled to places, do try it at least once in your life. And it needn't be a luxury trip. There are lots of budget-friendly options that actually give you much better experience than those hi-fi level hotels and expensive food. Moving on to prepare cup of biryani. Use a large pot in which you can easily mix. I used my white clay pot for it. Heat coconut oil, saute crushed shallots, ginger and garlic along with some curry leaves. Then goes in some crushed green chilies and mix for some time till the rasmin leaves. Then add chopped tomatoes and mix. After a minute, add the cooked beef. The beef is not fully cooked. It needs a bit more cooking and that will be done now. Keep that covered and cook on low flame. Again making a paste of the roasted coconut with some warm water. Now this is optional but gives a good taste. When beef is cooked, add the ground paste and mix. Adding some more water into the blender, mix and add. Then goes some chopped coriander leaves. Finally goes in cooked tapioca that was drained into a colander. Mash a bit, leaving some chunks of the tapioca. Again you can temper this by heating coconut oil, frying shallots, curry leaves and dried red chilies. And while garnishing, you may chop in some onion and that bite of the onion gives a good taste. I prepared the chicken fry and well upon at the end because these two needs a bit more of time. So I thought I'll finish the rest of the work and then move on to this. To the chicken add some corn flour just before frying to make it crispy. I remember this tip given by my sister-in-law Shabna quite some time back when I was about to fry prawns. And ever since then I always remembered to add it be it frying anything. Into the hot oil add some curry leaves to flavor the oil and then fry the chicken pieces. Make sure flame is medium high. Do not overcrowd the pan as well by adding more chicken pieces just to finish off the cooking. These are tips for beginners and I'm sure anyone with experience doesn't need to know this. batter for vellapam. It's fermented well. Now if you don't want to add yeast, you can still ferment it and I have a recipe on that. 
will share the link in the icard above or in the description box but that batter you will have to prepare the previous night using freshly grated coconut it's very simple but needs more time to ferment i used to cook these pancakes in a non-stick pan specially designed in that shape but i never loved the taste of it i remember my mom cooking in a different pan that was quite big and black in color it was much crispier and very tasty I used to carry that in my tiffin, share with my bunch of friends in school. Even now, they tell me how much they loved the appam and egg roast or the chana curry my mom cooked. Only later, I found out that those appams were prepared in an iron kadai. It's difficult to get it well seasoned. I have a very small iron kadai which I keep aside for preparing this appam. The only other way I use this kadai is to fry papads. So then the kadai gets more seasoned every time I fry the papads. and it becomes non-stick to prepare these pancakes or the appams you just have to pour a ladle of the batter swirl it and the center should be a bit thick so basically it's like crispier rim and soft center They were getting out from home and will be here anytime soon. So didn't know what to serve them as a welcome drink. The weather was a bit chilling so needed something warm. Did a trial preparing custard coffee. Heated some milk, mixed in some custard powder, not too much that it stands out and make the drink too thick. Add sugar to sweeten or you can use condensed milk. Just when milk reaches the boiling point and add the custard mix and keep stirring so that there's no lumps forming. I transfer to a larger pot as I had to prepare a bit more extra. Then to this add instant coffee powder and mix for a minute. Switch off the flame, add some crushed cashews to get a crunch while having it. I added a pinch of salt for that balance in the drink. and though they came I always forget to switch on my camera these days whenever I have guest at home don't know if it's because I get lost in the chit chats I guess it was almost 11 p.m. they left. It was a refreshing night for us. And that comes to an end to today's vlog as well. Hope you all enjoyed watching it. Do try the recipes and please share your feedback on my email or Instagram. I would love to hear it from you all. Take care everyone. See you with another video. Until then, bye-bye.